depression is you don't feel anything. You're completely shut off. So again, if somebody's perpetually in that state, why live? But you can come out of it. You can do it if you're doing the right thing. I did it. Yeah. It took me three years, but I did it. It's like you want to not be in that position anymore, but you have to want to oh do it. Oh my gosh, That's the you're hard so part. right. Well, you have to have ambition or drive oh to get out of it, gosh, right? But yeah. And I almost equate this, it sounds like a weird comparison, but I compare it to working out. Yeah. Like I, oh, yeah. yeah, like yeah. I know that working out makes me feel better eventually, not in the moment. And I know that I need it and everything. But you hate it. In the book, yeah. I hate it. And I hate <laughs> it throughout. Hey, and I hate right. it throughout, yeah. And that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. The All right. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Be Frank Podcast. Today, we're doing a special thing, the co-host with Tony Malo and then myself. And then we have a special guest. He's uh, everything. Like, explain who he is. Everything that Adam Rob does. Uh, <laughs> I met Adam as an actor, and then he became uh, a, a wedding videographer, photographer, then producer. Mm -hmm. Those goes at the same time. Then a producer in commercial world. Then it moved into... Um, train depot owner slash wedding venue. Did I say that right? Eh, sure. And then, yeah, sure. Then film producer again. <laughs> yeah. And then city councilman. Yeah, we uh, gonna, we're going to cover a lot of stuff. You we're going like, to cover uh, those kind of stuff in profession. We talk about money. We talk about mental health. And we yeah. talk about job description. I think everyone yeah. should listen to it. We yeah. had a great conversation. Yeah. So let's get started. Oh, we'll ask him the trivia really fast. Oh, yes. How many, when I campaigned, how many people answered the door wearing no pants? What? <laughs> <laughs> when I, I was said campaigning, way high. I said way When high. I was campaigning, how many people answered the door wearing no pants? Mm, like 200? That was See, the same number. I said 236. <laughs> it was three. Three. Yeah. How many dogs bit me? Two. Oh, oh bang on, yeah. It, it was like a it was a, a bigger dog mix in the back of my knee. And then, and then a chihuahua bit me on my knee. They bite everybody. Oh, is that really work to go to the door? I won 80%. Really? Yeah. yeah. I guess it works. So he's going to write a book about all these individual experiences. I'm telling you, around, already started. around election yeah. time, you could just take this whole segment, turn into just a whole thing about oh, yeah. what he does. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. interesting. I do have a whole new level of respect for like legitimate like politicians even at like a yeah. senate level i've heard stories of how like uh, like kind of early on even when they're having to fly back and forth between their mm -hmm. state and like washington dc mm. i mean they're sleeping on couches at their office it's a grind they're not really making a lot of money and it's like yeah you, you work your way to the top i'm not saying they're all like yeah. angels yeah listen but more respect than i have more given. respect yeah yeah for sure that it's a tough a tough gig yeah mm -hmm. and i you. like the ones that like talk about what happened on the floor and like what mm -hmm. they voted and why even if i don't like like mm -hmm. for instance like one of our senators now mm -hmm. not a fan of his at all mm -hmm. but he has like a live facebook feed mm -hmm. and so after he comes into his office he turns on and he was like this is what happened today this is what i voted this is why i voted for it these are all the ins and outs that they're not trying to tell you on the news of all these yes. extra little mm -hmm. i had to vote yes on something i didn't like but it's because they had all these other laws that were mm. what do they call them earmarks? Yeah, pork barrel and earmarks. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he, so at least he explains. Yeah, yeah. I still don't, don't like him, but it, I respect the fact that he's like, yeah. okay, I'm doing what I I'm supposed to do. I think so. Right. To do. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have earmarks or anything like that really on exactly. city yeah. level. Yeah. Thankfully. Pretty... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's when he gets, I think, hairy. That's when he yeah, gets messy. Yeah. The way it works at, in the local level, on a, it's called strong manager. The strong mayor is strong manager, and we're strong city manager. Meaning, so like the city manager and the staff at city hall, planning director, et cetera, they'll come up with like intricate plans, and the council just like gives approval, votes for it to actually go in, and work like the oversight kind of thing. So I'm not actually sitting there writing. Well, I say that I have written like two bills as you would call them ordinances or whatever you, you can do yeah. i can write them but i'm just saying it, traditionally city hall will write them oh got it you know the but you're putting them to vote or right but pass. we're the ones that's looking at them and saying like nah i'm not voting for that or yes i'm voting for that, for that. yeah i can write it myself but okay. i've only done like two mm. chat gpt that thing 
Chat, 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 chat. <laughs> write an ordinance nice. for yes. this make it heartfelt not too much make it seem serious and yeah. heartfelt. <laughs> i'm new to chat gpt are you using yeah i use that yeah. all the time redo for a small to town i'm still manually doing these emails man Really? I gotta learn. I gotta figure really? out how to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's, I like it's it. thank God. I mean, like honestly, like I don't speak English perfectly, so like whenever I like write up to like email to my client, mm -hmm. I always had my assistant, hey, look over my English. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know. Now I don't you have speak to English do it. really well though. Oh, thank yeah. you. I mean, like, but like it's just like I just say chat GPT, hey, fix my English, and it fixes it. You say <laughs> fix my English. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And then they, they'll, they'll do it, and then I like, it's like cool, you know. Okay. I just send it out, and then people. You know, I use Grammarly and then ChatGPT at the same wow. time. But text, I don't use mm -hmm. it. So, you know, hmm. whoever getting text from me, you know, it's, coming from me. It's, coming right. it's, it's really his. Language is, it's not language the robot. <laughs> it's not the robot. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, ask your five-year question. We didn't get there. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. like, uh, I do end of the, this segment. Uh, I ask all the time. The reason I ask this question is, like, I've been doing podcasts with, like, a different people, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're, you'll be, like... Yours would be like 57 or something. But like uh, five-year goals for me. Dang. Uh, five-year goal for me is like I want to write a book without me writing it. So I want to do mm -hmm. you talking about like five years ago, like advice to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And then I will ask you like what, how do you see yourself five years? And then I will contact those people individually. And then I'm going to take, uh, I have a picture from five years ago today five years from now, and then oh. I want to write the coffee table book of like life book or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it would be kind of written by people. And I think that all the, every page will have a people's like 15 year span, uh, 10 oh, year span of the story. Cool. So that's, yeah, like, yeah, that's why that's I'm really, kind of That's asking. really cool. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have to write anything. So <laughs> it'd be good. But anyways, uh, okay. 2018, yeah. it'd be uh, five years ago. What were you doing back then? Um, I had bought and I just, just bought and just bought and mm -hmm. <laughs> I had just purchased the train station oh. in 2018 and I had been living in Guthrie then for two or three years. So still kind of new and I just purchased the train station and I don't even think I was even at high five yet. Oh no. Yeah, I was just, I was going to start high five later on in that year as well. So that was a lot of life. Yeah, the advertising agency I worked mm. for. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of life changes going on there, and that's where I was. What yeah. would you say to yourself? What did you say to yourself? <clears throat> what advice would you give it to yourself five years ago? God, where you are now? Because you were in big transition, three kids. Um, oh, which by the way, can I just put in on this? His kids are award winning. Cute kids, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally win awards. We got a bit big show over here. <laughs> no, so pre-children. Um, yeah, I'm pre-children. Uh -huh. I'm married though. Oh gosh, what would I tell myself back then? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, gosh, well, see, I was in a heavy, I was in heavy uh, mental depression then too. Mm. I had extreme anxiety and depression back then. I even had to go to. St. Anthony's Mental Hospital for a while. Oh, really? Yeah. And so I was really heavily, I think I was on meds then too. I was in and out of therapists and stuff like that. So did you check yourself in to the hospital? Mm -hmm. Like you were, how yeah, long I was were having in? an episode. How long were you in? Only like a week. Well, where I mean, where that's a good they don't, time. they don't sell it like that though. They, oh, you just go see a doctor and they, then you go they'll, in they'll help you and out. the gates. <laughs> yeah. They'll help you out. And, you know, you might, you might, yeah, you might just stay in a room or something and you go in there and they're like, you're not leaving until we say you can leave. You're like, the wow. <laughs> and you come in in handcuffs on a chair Yeah. and then everybody who comes in, it doesn't matter what your issue is. You go straight to the right, this window and they give everybody meds. They drug everybody for like liability. Wow. Yeah. Cause you're in there with. There's three types of people that go into those mental wings. You have anxiety, depression people, which was me. You have bipolar and schizophrenics. And then you have substance abusers. Substance abusers were okay. They'd leave you alone. They're right. just They're in their own. They're just having a huge episode they in their own. head. Yeah. And they're yeah. probably in some, or they're in some form of detox. And so their brain, yes. like chemicals are. Right. But yeah. they'll leave you alone. They're really, but they're the ones that's really like pacing a lot and stuff. Yeah. And, and you're with all of them? Yeah. You're on one wing together in a, in a, on a floor level. Wow. Yeah. 
And it's like prison. Like you can't have shoestrings. Yeah. You can't have this. You have bars on the windows. You can't leave. Your, you don't have cell cool. phones. You can't yeah. have anything sharp edges. You're not allowed to have soap. And you're next to it. the people that are yeah. having truly chemical mess up. And you're just in a big transition in your life. And you're right. what would be considered yeah. on the mild version of needing some guidance. Yeah, the substance and you're next of people. To full schizophrenics. The substance people would be like, "Hey, I'll give you anything on my plate if you give me your cookie." <laughs> in your coffee so they could get a high of some kind so sugar high wow. or caffeine high Damn. so they'd be like yeah so i'll give you anything on my plate it was give me your cookie and they get all the cookies together so they could just like garble them together wow <laughs> yeah, they get some kind of kick. <laughs> but, oh they would, but they wouldn't like mess with you you know what yeah I mean? <clears throat> and they'd all come in with like charcoal mm -hmm. on their face because i guess the police shoved that down your mouth if you're ODing. oh right to absorb the to absorb the stuff yeah. so you knew you knew them when you saw them um, but the people who had like, you know, mental chemical imbalances would be the ones that like that get tackled a lot and like yeah. restrained. And, yeah, they're like truly <sighs> terrified damn. in there. Yeah, I remember being, we we would have a um, movie every evening and we'd watch Mrs. Doubtfire and a guy had had an episode. The same, or, the same every night? No. Oh. I just remember that's what we were, <laughs> oh, okay. that's what we were watching that night. Was, <laughs> that's going to make you. <laughs> that's what we were watching that night, Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, okay. And one of these guys who had had like an episode earlier, we had to be like, tackled and, and straitjacketed. They wheeled him out on a bed to watch it. And so we're all sitting there watching it and he's in the middle in a straitjacket like <laughs> that was a good part. <laughs> oh my god. He's straight jacketed in a, in a bed, you know? Wow. Oh my god. Uh, it was trippy. I ended up getting spe special privileges. Okay. I was what was called high functioning. So uh -huh. I could get crayons and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, Adam. How did we go this whole podcast and not go into <laughs> not go, go mental illness? Yeah. So I would get crayons. Yeah. No pencils. Oh God. Yeah. Because uh, that would stab. be. Yes. Yeah. And this, like I said, this was voluntary. This was you saying, I need extra help. Yeah. I'm going to trust the Oklahoma yeah, mental health. It was health, very uh, misleading. And I met other people who said that. You're right. Yeah. It was very misleading. They didn't tell you it was going to be that. They made it sound like just like you went to. Because you have, you have insurance, right? Your private yeah, insurance. Yeah, like yeah. you have means of private care yeah and it sounds like you're going into a state hospital is like the way right. you're describing yeah, yeah. This. oh this is all what happened yeah and are you thought i thought i was just going to go in there for an evening and sleep in there and nurses would come you know help you yeah. with your, you know they didn't tell you it was like, like, a like prison. help regulate your medicines and like yeah yeah they didn't say it was like a straight up yeah like prison and um oh my gosh i'm not like prison but you know what i mean yeah like well like, you're not you weren't gonna describe leave. it no hell no god no no, you could not leave. And so Abby, here. and so your wife's like coming in trying to check in on you and, she, and they're yeah, like, oh, you, you we'll, got we'll let you know in a week. You got visitation. She could come in for an hour a day or 30 minutes at a certain time and come in. No phones, what? nothing. So you had pay phones. You had to memorize numbers. You'd call out wow. and you couldn't go anywhere. And This makes people who have need mental health, yeah. like health help, not want to Yeah, they don't want to help. go, I guess. Yeah, no. Uh, and, and like I met other people said the same thing. They were like, gosh, they did not tell me it was going to be like that. But, that's not help because that could make someone that yeah, is I mean, dealing I, with anxiety, depression, that maybe at a, like let's say at a a lower high functioning level become yeah. unfunctioning because you're flipping out. I would think right. that and the people like, like me in that environment talk about my anxiety it would shoot up. Yeah, would, and um, the people like with my problems were, were worse being in there. Yeah, yeah, so that's like, what I'm saying. The yeah. substance abusers, it was good for them because they right. don't have anxiety. Well, I'm not right. trying to generalize. They're not there for anxiety, depression. Right. They're there just because they were on drugs or they're alcohol, there to whatever. detox. Right. So they weren't like flipping out really, but the anxiety yeah. people's like, this is making me worse. Yeah. And uh, I mean, well, I'm just sitting yeah. there. I can't remember what I was doing. This new guy came in. Mm -hmm. They're sitting him in there, checking him in. They got his handcuffs off and everything. And one of the girls I was talking to the whole time, she just goes over there and just starts beating him up. And they restrain her. She's put in a room, straight jacket and all that. I saw her the next day. And I was like, what happened? What did you do to that guy? Cause she's like talking to me all normal like yeah. we were before. She goes, oh, he reminded me of my brother. Wow. And I go, do you hate your brother? She goes, no. What? <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, okay. <laughs> I was like, okay. I just left it alone. But I, I saw. That's so reactive. I saw okay. at least just like five people get just tackled with the either so the, it's like the you restraining. Lucked, you and lucked stuff out like that. by not looking like someone's brother, father, yeah, yeah, boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. Right. Something. But yeah, they get like, but mostly the people who got tackled like that and had issues and had to be restrained and straight jacketed and stuff like that were the people who had schizophrenia or bipolar. Mainly schizophrenia. Right. Yeah. But do you... But you're mixed in with... Yeah, them. you're mixed in with them. Yeah. So they're going around being like, again, counter, spaceships. So yeah, yeah. Spaceships, aliens, you're, you know, you're all going to die. Like they, they clearly have mental like 
yeah. severe mental issues. It needs to help them. Yeah. And, and those are the ones that would then wig out and they'd have to be restrained and stuff like that a lot. Was that hindsight? Is that helped you to went there or? That was the beginning of my mental health journey. Huh. Um, that didn't really help anything at all. Mm. And then when I got out, uh, it took me about three years to recover fully. Three years. What, what did you do? Uh, I tried, like, I mean, they wanted you to go through the system. So, like, go to this therapist, take three different medications, you know, um, which is funny. Like, every th only one therapist really helped me in a way. But you think, like, gosh, you could get, do like the movies do. Like, well, let's dissect this and look into it. I never had a therapist that actually would do that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like they wouldn't do anything. Mm. They would just it was medicine. You go like you go like eleven sessions, and they just I was just talking to them. They're not at, they're not really asking questions. They're not like, well, let's let's let's, let's yeah. look into that. Why right. do you think that that what happened in Give your childhood? Tools. Yeah, what happened in your childhood? Why that would lead? They wouldn't do any of that. Really? Yeah, huh. and, and and I was like, okay, I'll try another one, and then another one. I went to like four, including the one that I saw right after getting out of the hospital. Wow. And no, yeah, there was no. I, it was just strange how that changed. Yeah, you know. were they psychologists? or psychiatrist that you were saying? Mm -hmm. So those were medicine driven versus like family fair or family No, one, therapist one or... of them was. <sighs> is it there, because there's differences, right? Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. there's difference like a psychiatrist, a therapist. counselor yeah. and stuff like that. I tried it. They, they were all in there. Finding therapist, good therapist is hard. Yeah. I went, I went through like six. Oh, you really? went as well. Yeah, like yeah. I just went through a bunch and I walked out on so many therapists because I didn't like that. It's opposite of me and like, I didn't like the person dissects me with like a textbook style oh no yeah. that's true too yeah. what? what so like they have like a personality test from one through six or whatever and then they let me take the test and then i go to a therapy session and then i'm like certain number of like five or six or whatever and then like i start saying stuff oh because you're five and then I, oh, and then I try to put you in a dude. box yeah, to make exactly. you be able to recognize. Exactly. And then like I say one more thing. Well, dude, that's okay. That's, whatever. And then like I was start saying it. Like and then anagram. I told the therapist, it's like your hey, anagram or something. Yeah, if you mm -hmm. say that to me one more time, I'm gonna walk out. Right. That's yeah, what yeah. I told her. And then she said, "Well, because you say that, because you're fine, I'm just." Oh out. my god. <laughs> <That's> just <saying. laughs> that's good for you. No, good for you though. Yeah. Yeah. Because they are. That, that's part of that same outlook or concept right there is the same with why they do drugs all the time too it, it, it's just such a methodicalized like they want to make it all be really easy where they're not having to like dive in and dissect it's just oh you're this that means you have this you take this pill yeah you're this you're on number wow. five this is why you're this is what that is boom 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 there's like no like it's all shallow level and i don't i don't like that that's yeah. tough yeah, I, same I, thing. yeah i like my therapist now because she's like very blunt and honest and if i'm like talking about my problem or whatever i'm like kind of complaining or something well that's your fault you know you're being like a little bitch or something hey sometimes you yeah. need that yeah. sometimes you need that yeah no i mean yeah and i was like cool. and you're like it's because i'm a five <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you need that though yeah oh my god so yeah i yeah. go i go to her wow. i see her every other week or something i mean that's that's been super great you know yeah but it's just like I, I can't, I, whenever you explain to me, like finding a therapist, it's just hard. Yeah. You know? It yeah. sounds like it, for you, I'm wondering if like part of your journey was because the system is broken. Like, was it part of it? Like, this is what the system's going to give me. And so obviously it's on me to figure out my own oh, yes. steps. There, there was like, a, I can't go to the hospital again because right. that's prison. Never going there. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. I don't want to be on medicine right. the way that they, so I have to figure this out myself, right? Like you went through. Yes, you're exactly right. Yeah. It made me have to be like, I'm going to have to do this on my own. I'm going to have to figure it out on my own, just, which is scary in a dark scary. place to be. not how that's supposed to go. No. What did yeah. you do, the therapy, yeah. and then what, what else did you do to like get out of that? Therapy didn't really get me out. Oh. I got so off. you couldn't find one. You need couldn't to find one. Call, call I need to call your friend now. Yeah. Um, so she can tell you being a little. Like, I, I kind of learned that like so my specific situation, medication. I mean, what if you get the? There's a thing called a genetic test. It doesn't mean like where your heritage is from. It's where they swab your DNA, mm -hmm. and they'll send it to a lab, and the lab will come back with every available medication on the market and say. This is how your metabolism, based on your body, is going to handle these meds. And you'll have a red, yellow, and green. Mm. Oh. So if you take a pill that's in the red, your body's going, your brain's going to wig out and your body's going to have a lot of side effects. That's really interesting. Yeah, a lot of people don't know it and it's the greatest thing ever. I have yellow, meaning like it'll help you. It might feel a little queasy though. It's yellow. 
green means your brain's going to like it, your body's going to like it based on your specific DNA. It's a genetic test. Genetic test. Oh. And, wow. and it was perfect because I was on different meds before. And yeah, I would have all kinds of different side effects. She put me on this. I had my green list, took one in the green. It worked perfect. But at the end of the day, that's only like masking the problem. No, Right. If you're bipolar or schizophrenic, keeps, you need it. That test keeps people from crazy right. side effects if you, yeah. Yeah, that test lets you know which meds to take if you're going to be on them. Yeah. So, but in my experience, my opinion, if you're a bipolar or schizophrenic, yes, that's be on your medication, take that medication, stay on it. But if you're not you need to look at medication as like, this is just to pull me out of the chaos mm -hmm. or I can then try to do the real work on what my problem is. It's not right. a long-term, the meds will fix you. Right. It's just, it's kind of like a nuclear bomb that just, it destroys your happiness and your sad. Yeah. <laughs> and your yeah, anxiety. I've, I've been on it before, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it just kills numb. your whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You're just numb. Mm -hmm. And so you better use that moment to like figure out, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing to, to, to figure this out, to get a plan. Um, what, what's my actual issue? Like, what's, what am I struggling with? Mm -hmm. And so when I started doing that, I then weaned myself off of pills and got off. So I've been off for years. Mm. Um, I hadn't gone to a therapist or I had to use medication in a long time. Um, and then I just started the mental health journey. You know, um, I think a lot of my issue was just as having an existential crisis when we grew up. How old are you? 32. Okay, well, when we grew up, <laughs> <laughs> no, when, 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 we, when we grew up, and it's, it was worse now than ever, so it counts. Yeah. Um, we were like, it was like beaten to our heads, like what matters in life is your job, your career, going mm -hmm. to college. That's what matters. It's yeah. not your family. It's not God, country, family, all that kind of stuff. Well, it, it, was, it was said that it's God, family, country, but like mm -hmm. in reality. Yeah. It's not. Right. Right. It was like, you gotta the day, go to college. The day-to-day -day practices right. were, right. get a good job, go to college, get a good job, right. get a good family. That's what matters. Yeah. If you don't, you don't have a soul. Right. You're going to you go to hell. Right. You right. own your first home at a certain age. Right. And, and it was just beat into our heads from elementary school onward. Mm -hmm. That that was what you needed to do. And it wasn't those other things. And so the problem is yeah, people... Yeah, to be happy and poor was uh, not yeah. a thing. No, it was not. It was like, just get a job, get a career, whatever. Because people, our parents' age... They did have those purposes, mm -hmm. and then it's while also the, the boom of like corporations and yeah, the 80s and they were out years. working, and the people who had degrees were doing great, and they weren't. Mm -hmm. So they're like, damn it, I'm gonna instill that in my kids. Hardcore, you better go to college and get it. Yeah, and they didn't instill the inner stuff simultaneously, right? As much. No, that's right. And I think that's why today there's a lot of suicides among young people. They get out and they do get a career. And then they arrive there and they realize, oh, this is not satisfy me. This is not make me feel complete. Mm. And what is the point then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, that's it. Like, yeah. what is the point? If this is not going to satisfy me, because like a lot of times the journey there, you're thinking like, oh man, once I arrive that's there. That's your purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The journey itself is what keeps you going because you think once I arrive, I will arrive in this bliss. Yeah. yeah. And it also comes there. from the belief system that money will buy happiness. Yeah, yeah. all of that. Absolutely. Yeah. And that is that's the what that 80s, is. 90s kid right there. That's it's right. That's right. Happiness. Yeah. The career yeah. status, the money, you uh -huh. will be happy. And then they're getting there and they're either consciously they're or subconsciously realize. Yeah. And they realize yeah. that I'm not. Right. And they're like, and there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. Why be here? Yeah. I think that's part of the suicide rate going higher. So I had to go through that as, my, as well. What is the point? Mm -hmm. I turned agnostic. During that time frame, I didn't know if oh, wow. I really believed in God or not. It was a journey on every front. Oh, wow. Didn't leave the house, masked it really well. Were you yeah. still working at high five at the time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was doing all that. You were doing, and so probably not to help, and no, nothing against marketing and advertising, but mm -hmm. that means that you basically went from this filmmaker that you talk so passionately about, mm -hmm. car rides, film festivals, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. right, to doing it at a corporate level. So now you're getting paid. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Nice figures, right? Mm -hmm. Nice day rates to do commercials that you're not passionate about because right. you're producing and doing all the thing, which is mm -hmm. seems like the thing you want to do. Right. Now you're getting to do what you love, which is something I struggle with too. It's like, I'm doing exactly what I've always wanted to do, but now it's a job. Yeah, that's right. It yeah. went away. It went away. Yeah. And so now I have to struggle to find the passion mm -hmm. of yeah. the corporate job. That's right. Yeah. It, it, it tapers off. Like It's hard, yeah. So I... I had said in my mind, I'm like, mm, no, I'm not like, I don't want to do movies anymore. I don't care. 
Yeah. You want to be famous when you're like 18. Right, right. And then at this time, I'm in my 30s. And I'm like, oh, God, I don't, give a care. I don't even yeah. like to watch them anymore. And then a career, boom, right in my life. Wow. <laughs> that's where the divine thing. I that's what I was say. That's where one could say God said. The God said, thing is, he goes, oh, I you don't a, want it anymore. I have, a and, thing, I have a job for you. And you're not vain anymore. Here you go. <gasps> you're not vain anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You want it? Now Now you, you sincerely don't want that for vanity reasons. I will give it to you. Is what kind of happened. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's, that's part of it. That's great. Wow. Yeah, that's I kind like of part that. of it. Yeah, yeah. I instantaneously had a, a career, a movie career, when I didn't want it anymore. And uh, and I'm still on that journey now. I'm not agnostic anymore. Right. And um, now you're probably open to all of the options out there. Or yeah, like yeah, more, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a different look on life. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll never be the same, but that's a good, but I mean that in a good way. There's like right. like like a maturity, like how like going to war, somebody's never the same. Right. They have a lot of PTSD, you know. Mm-hmm. I'll never be the same, but it's it's a maturity. It went you had to go through that. Yeah, I had to go through it. And yeah. at the time you 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 want it to go away. Yeah. Only when you've gone through it looking back, you're like, boy, that made me better. But at the time you don't Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. You don't know that. Um So with the advice of five years ago, so this is at the so five years ago you were at the beginning of that journey. Mm-hmm. What would you say? Yeah. Um you know buckle, what's funny? You know what's buckle funny? up, buddy. I'll it's going to be a tough <laughs> ride, but you'll be all right. <laughs> I, I could go deep with something. I don't think I don't know if you guys will get it. I've tried to explain it to somebody before. When you go through severe depression, what people don't realize is that it's not that you are in pain. It's that you have the inability to feel pain or anything at all. Mm-hmm. That's what real depression is. Mm-hmm. When people are like, oh, my spouse left me. I mean, I'm depressed. Ah, I, not taking that away from you. But that's, that's grief. That's grief. That's right. That's yeah. grief. True depression is there's the inability of anything. But not. Yeah. So when, I used to call it, um, I just want to not. Yeah. We're like, not what? And I'm like, don't know. Just not. <laughs> it's not really live. Mm-hmm. Not die. Right. Just not. Like, can I just not today? Can I not this week? I would go through long phases of that. Really? Just not wanting to not. Wow. And I couldn't describe like that. What does that mean? Well, when you're, when you're, because that's why people are like, well, if you're depressed, do things you like. You don't get it. I can't like anything. You just want to not. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So imagine like if your taste buds, right, if they were gone and you taste food, you you have the inability to taste it. So if you're like, oh, you need to add more sugar, you don't get it. It doesn't matter how much sugar you add or what kind of steak it is or what what kind Mm -hmm. of seasonings you put on it. If you don't have taste buds, you're not going to feel it. You have the memory of what it used to taste like, but that memory isn't going to make you feel anything. Right. That's what it is to have depression is you don't feel anything. You're completely shut off. So you can stimulate all these things. So again, if somebody's perpetually in that state, why live? Mm-hmm. And that's part of the anxiety depression mold. And if you look at suicide notes, I'm big on reading suicide notes um, because I'm looking for these key words and they all have the same thing in there. Numb, inability to feel, can't feel anything. Stuff like that. And yeah. Like, exactly. And you say suicide notes is what you said? Mm-hmm. What do you mean by that? When people take their own life tragically. Oh, you're, they, they you're leave reading. Notes. I'm reading their oh. notes. Oh. Oh. And uh, from, a, from a perspective of trying to see if I see those. Those same. Things, and they're there. They're those all patterns. There. Yeah, they're all there. I can't feel anymore. Mm. Can't, what am I doing? Yeah, can't do that. And um, like, problem is hope is a feeling too. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> if you don't have it. If you don't have the inability to feel it. So even though you know, like, well, it'll get better maybe, well, I can't feel that hope because, I'm, again, I'm unable to feel any feeling. Yeah. So it no, just kind of goes deep down a spiraling uh, trail there, I guess. Yeah. Um, but you can come out of it. You, 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 can, you can feel again. It will. Yeah. You can do it if you're doing the right thing. I did it. Yeah. It took me three years, but I did it. Well, the hard part about it is it's like you want to not be in that position anymore, but you have to want to oh do my it. Gosh, That's the you're hard so part. Right. It's, it's like, like I don't want to be here, but it's like, but you have to tell yourself you kind of do, right? But like, you know. well, you have to have ambition or drive oh, to get out of it, right? right? Gosh, but yeah. and I almost equate this. It sounds like a weird comparison, but I compare it to working out. Yeah. Like I, oh, yeah. yeah. Like yeah, I yeah. know that working out makes me feel better eventually, not in the moment, and I know that I need it and everything. But you hate it. And the book, yeah. and I hate it. <laughs> And I hate it throughout, and I hate it throughout, yeah. So it's, I, so I always tell people, because my husband's a runner, and they say, like, well, do, would you ever run? And I go, I want to want to run, mm-hmm. but I don't want to run. Yeah. But I want to wish that I liked it, oh, but not enough that I can like it. Yeah. yeah. And I've, you know, and sadly, depression is in that weird way of, like, you don't um, want to be here. No, but you're right, but then it's like. But you have to want something to 
yeah. practice it. It's a really weird spiral. It's, yeah, and you got to get out on yeah. your own head too. Yeah. Um, is it Rick Springfield that did Jesse's Girl? The song? I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has a video out you should see. He's, he suffered it really bad. He hung himself. Rick Springfield? Yeah, and he, he hung himself in a shed. The oh. rope snapped. Mm. And he took that as a sign that it, he, had purpose. he shouldn't, even though he mm-hmm. said the same thing. He couldn't feel it. Right. Severe depression, suicidal tendencies. I mean, he hung himself. The rope wow. Rope. <laughs> if that's not divine intervention. I know, right. If that well, doesn't snap you out of like an adrenaline, like gives you an adrenaline kick yeah. to get out of it. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it was like... Um, like everybody else was telling me the advice and then like friends and family and stuff like get out of it be happy or do mm-hmm. what you have and all yeah. that stuff I didn't want to listen to it I don't I don't feel like I'm just, aware yeah. I'm aware I need to be happy uh, yeah. I get it buddy yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. I was just like well yeah. like, whatever good luck know? with that yeah like, yeah uh, you know one night you know I was at the parking lot and then just out of the office and then parking lot like midnight or 1, 1 a.m. and then like Literally, YouTube videos say how to get out of the depression. Oh, nice. It pops up. It just pops up. I never watched YouTube that much before then. I just like went through like phone screen scrolling through and then mm-hmm. I think it just popped up. And then the guy name is How to Beast. He does fitness, uh, also like a dating advice and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. This and was a pod, like a podcast? No, it was just like hmm. a vlog. Oh. But also like... A, kind of advice for like young men kind of stuff and then I remember like I just watched maybe like 15 minute video like those like I watched like a six different video that night and like probably more than that and then one time he says he was in like a Spain in a like a middle of nowhere and then like I remember I can't find that video for some reason. But like it's just like <laughs> it was, that, a, it was that adds to the poetry, yeah. Yes. <laughs> he never found it again. Never found it again. Never found it again. And then he says like, yeah, if you're like aware of you are going through hard times and if you're working on it, that's like a ten percent of people actually do that. Mm-hmm. And then if Yeah, you're being aware, aware is the it, first. And then if you're actually working on it, that's like one percent of ten percent of people. So like he's like, I'm 100%. proud of you, bro. Like, that's what he said. This is about oh. mental health. Yeah. And then, like, he was, like, crying. He was emotional. And, like, he was talking to camera. Probably he was talking to himself. Yeah. And then it just hit me. And then that, that day, that week, I start working out. Oh, okay. Good. Oh, and, and that was, but that was the hit you needed in your, in was, your brain. That was the brain. I needed it. And then also, I start going to gym. Mm-hmm. And then start watching YouTube. And then all the people is doing the fitness stuff, go, doing the self-development, mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff, start reading books and all that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, that's that's pretty much why I started YouTube. Oh. Really? Yeah. And you've never found that video? No. Dude, that's poetic, though. Don't that ever find it. <laughs> or maybe it'll pop up again. Yeah, he, yeah. he, got, he got like a... And it was meant to so be at that time. And, like, and well, I could see it. that probably any other time in your life, if that video would have popped up, you would have just glazed right over yeah that, like it, you needed that mm-hmm. moment yeah that of day. that darkest spot that day like i just was dark times i was mm-hmm. thinking about different things and then uh yeah i mean if literally that video saved my life wow, wow. so i, I want to do that him. to the people you know yeah bring that so, out yeah and, like i didn't even think about at the time say i'm gonna do that for people you know right right and mm-hmm. then after like three years after that or something like that i'm like hmm I, I think, think I'll do it. Yeah. Do I'll it when, do it. yeah, there's like a giving back there. Yeah. I'm yeah. always open to like telling anybody, clearly, I'm just saying it right here in front yeah, of yeah. the camera. <laughs> uh, I'm always open to telling anybody about it. So just in case they're struggling with something, I'm always there to talk with people about it. Yeah. yeah. What well, I was going to, that was going to lead me to what I was going to ask you next is now being in this kind of world of politics, is that something you could see yourself wanting to dive into? Mm-hmm. That like the, that I don't I want to say the Oklahoma system because I only know of it, but like, mm-hmm. That system sounds very broken. That is not how things should be. No, it's not. And, and is there, I don't know, other other senators and, mm-hmm. and people within a state level that that can be something that can be addressed? I'm yeah. saying it very vague because I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but. Yeah, I think so. And I, I, do, I do have a passion for like wanting to help in that category any way I yeah, can at a higher level. Gotta whether, be another way. Whether it be on a political level or I've even said. Gosh, we should Could do mental health, m- mental health seminars at my depot ballroom or something. Something. I'm willing to do anything, yeah. Yeah. And there's probably a world where people do need to go away for a week 
but there's got to be a way to do it without that. handcuffs and <laughs> yeah. And, the yeah, problem yeah. with that is they just need to, but it all comes back to like, is there the staff there to handle the different wings yeah. and that costs more money. Mm-hmm. And then the reason why they drug everybody is liability. So it all kind of comes back to like, well, if citizens weren't suing, it's yeah, all there's levels. There's levels of that, you know, yeah. but and also there's drugging. Everybody just needs to also not be a thing in America. Yeah. Yeah. yeah everybody, it's getting... everybody got a clonazepam. Yeah. 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 <laughs> everybody and got that's not helping anything. So no, everyone, everyone who came in, but in like, if you're a clinic, everybody got the DNA test. Um, so you don't see what I'm saying? Like oh, in, yeah, yeah, in yeah, your yeah, world, yeah. everyone got the DNA or everybody also got a, um, what's DNA it called? Test. A, yeah, yeah, the genetic test to make sure that the clozapam yeah. works for them. And then also maybe everybody gets the, and I don't know if this is a test, but like where you test your dopamine, adrenaline, mm-hmm. um, all tests your happy hormones. Yeah. So that there's a world where Yosuke's going through what he's going through. And they go to your clinic and they test and they go, oh, Yosuke, you're actually okay. You're just, your dopamine is in the negatives. Right. That's what right. we're going to do is regulate that's the right. other hormones. Let's get you through a week and then let's find out if that's what it is. Do you there's know a, what I mean? There's a doctor in California that's big on that. that oh, really? That I ran like, across. Like, let's just that, make sure that's you're... all he does is like a lot of people are misdiagnosed when the problem is, is like just dopamine and stuff and, like that. And yeah. And your hits. Right. Yeah. And that's, that needs and to be And sometimes regulated. that happens if you take other medicine and drugs. Oh, well, drug drugs is, mm-hmm. that's why they call it dope, right? <laughs> it, it literally gives you a bunch of that. And then when you get off of it... <laughs> Then it like throws it off, right? <laughs> it's literally called dope for a reason. Um, but then like to have that, to have someone that says, mm-hmm. you're okay, this is just way off. Let's get this level and then let's get into therapy or like get into stuff. Yeah. yeah. I just created my own Your mental own hospital. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. I don't know. Yeah. And again, maybe and maybe I'm simplifying it way too much. I'm sure there's a doctor or therapist watching this that's like, she I mean, needs to shut up. She has no idea what she's talking about. Stuff that works out, you know? Yeah. It just... I think a lot of people complicate things and can't yeah. store, can't do yeah. anything. And no pharmaceutical rep can come into your office and sell you anything. Yeah. That should be the other rule of your hospital. That stuff was so expensive. Yeah. And, and they probably had pharmaceutical reps selling mm-hmm. to, I don't, you know, yeah. to the place. Are you like, on any SSRs allowed. now? What's that? Or medication now? Uh, non, not, Are you not, on not, any? not mental health ones now. I'm not either. Mm-mm. I, been I do take every once in a while. I do take when I feel it getting like kind of that in the not phase again, where I just have nothingness feeling. Um, I take Sam E, which is like a vitamin, yeah. which is something in your yeah, body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And good. I'll always forget about taking it. <laughs> and I'll go years and be fine. And then I'll get really like in this real darkness. And I'll, I'll normally mention something Sam to my anymore. mother. My mom's like, have you been taking your Sam E? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, because there it's is It's also like, expensive. It's like $50 for a month supply. I mean. Yeah, because they know it's in demand. Uh, yeah, there is but like it literally the... in three days, it will snap me out of it. Yeah, yeah, see, like when I was in the heart of my depression, nothing would work. Exercise, yeah. no, nothing. Something you, else you, was You off. were just in this, and mm-hmm. that was all there was to it. There was no, because everyone's like, you need to exercise, you diet, take these right. meds. Take Which those vitamins. things do help. They do, and they do help me now at a different level. But right. I was so deep, that does nothing. You just right. have this, and that is all there is to it. Yeah, that's deep. Right, you mm-hmm. have nothing helps you at all, ever. You And you're numb for years. And you start thinking, yeah, why would I be alive when I'm a void, like a robot, and you can't feel right, anything? Right. And that's why the suicide comes in your mind. Right. Um, that stuff helps now. So whenever I'm feeling something now, right. I'm getting anxiety, I feel like a little bit of that depression come on. You knock it Vitamins, out. Vitamins, work yeah. out, I'm fine. You kind of kick your, yeah, yeah, kick, yeah. Your kick, kick, kick your dopamine back up. Yeah. You're, you're totally fine. Yeah. But back, when I was in the hardcore of that, nothing yeah. did it. But that's where maybe the blood work and all the things should have come in play. And that was the scariest thing, because you're like, and if I am, I... I I don't want to... I can't keep doing that. You can't keep doing that. Yeah. Feeling nothing. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But then you started to have way... After a while, you have little inklings of like feeling something again, even if it was something sad. Right. It was something. And you're like, oh, thank God. (laughs) That makes so much sense. It finally came back. And then you're like, okay, great. Now I can kind of get out of the the hole a bit more. Yeah. 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 And then you start coming out. Okay. Yeah, thank God. Because you had no idea if you would or not. Right. And even one of my therapists, when I called her and told her about it, mm-hmm. who was the good one, she was like, yeah, so I guess you're ner- uh, not nerve endings, but your synapses, I guess, grew back <laughs> or came back or something. Like what are, She's like, I, I don't know. I guess, I guess it's possible to where you can. She com- said, I guess com- it's possible. 
Well, because no one's really, I mean, nobody knows. Nobody right? really knows. Yeah, yeah, like, like, because it wasn't anything chemical you could see on a test. It wasn't any of those things. It wasn't oh, anything. They, that, so they did all the testing, yeah, and they were there like, was nothing you're you could, firing right. off on all pistols. Right. You're doing fine. There was nothing you could read that was indicating any issue. You just had just had this, and it wasn't like a. Hmm. If I had more money, it'd make me happy. Again, right. you, could, you could give me a billion nothing. dollars cash. It would not have changed. Yeah. yeah. I would have known in the You had front. a job. You had yeah. a marriage. You had a home. Like yeah, you yeah. Had I, I would have known in the front of my mind, this is something I'm supposed to value, and I do, but there there would have been no right. feeling whatsoever. You were completely yeah. shut off. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's a terrifying yeah. place to be in, and I was for a while. That makes sense. And she's like, well, I guess you're... Great. Guess my job's done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this was also something going back to the five years ago to now is uh, psychedelics were like not as big of a deal then as they are now. Like a lot more common now and people are using, mm -hmm. what's, how do you say it? Psy so, uh, psilocybin or something? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. now that? becoming, that's basically what's in mushrooms, like psychedelic mushrooms. Oh. And so, so it's becoming, it was popular then, but it is really popular now where people are microdosing mm -hmm. because they're finding that it, well, they found this out like in the 70s. That it it connects your synapses in your brain, like it it opens your opens your horizons. Yeah, say, like right? you can see like a different thing. Like basically, you, know? you have a trip. Yeah, and the trip <laughs> so is you coming having that existential, like you're you're basically connecting your oh, wow. brain. I mean, it's it's. But we're just going into. hardcore, like take acid, <laughs> <laughs> take right, shrooms, trips, yeah. heroin, whatever. Well, yeah. now, but now, you can, <laughs> right? yeah. but now you can do it like in controlled. Substance. So, like, oh sp like gosh. special K, which is what's special K called in the medical version of it? Um, ketamine? ketamine. So now you can get ketamine treatments. You go to a facility mm -hmm. I heard with that. a nurse, yeah. and they give you ketamine treatments, which is what special K is, which is like a like a. Wow, a I didn't know they were doing this. Yeah, and they put on music, but literally a therapist sits there the whole time just to make sure that your the trip's controlled, it's and you crazy, lay there listening to music, and you it it makes your brain start connecting, and that's for people yeah. with deep it's a depression. Tranquilizer, you know. Yeah, but it's just an, an incredibly controlled wow. environment. Yeah. Have you tried it? No. It's crazy. No, no. I, I, mean, I, I would tell you. I would totally tell you. No, I haven't. Because, I mean, it's like a medical. Like you could have an insurance and you need oh, to go sure, to a sure, place sure. and you have to have so many treatments. If a doctor it. gives it to you, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> methadone. Well, I think of it as like expensive. Yeah. Like, like I methadone is just meth and the doctor gives it to you. Literally, yeah. Yeah. It's synthetic, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, in five years. <laughs> yeah. What it, what is the next what, what Oh I didn't want to you tell you, yourself, you yeah. know during that oh, I did yeah. write a note to myself to read later on. Really? Yeah. What did you write? I, uh something like uh, you know like this was when you're at your deepest. Yeah, something like I I you knew you would get here and get out of it or something like that. I haven't read it again. I need to. Well, what was oh, you wow. what did you write now? What did you say now? Like if you're talking to yourself from then. Um gosh, I don't know, man, cuz like I'm getting to those I, I, I do different levels now where you're, you're trying to get a goal done here and you're mm -hmm. arriving to that goal. So you're back into a place again of that goal doesn't fulfill you. Remember to keep going with what is truly the reason to be here. Mm. So, so when you, when I reach these physical goals, it's a constant <laughs> reminder of going, making sure the other side stays level with it. Like, sure so the other side stays level with it. Yeah. Yeah. The, Make sure all the buckets are equally filled. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. money bucket, goal bucket, but also spiritually, mentally, Exactly. Family. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Those all have to be at the same level. Yeah. And you're you're letting one go back. Yeah. And yeah. keep instead of keeping them all there. All the buckets, yeah. You know who taught me the bucket who? idea? I just, Matthew McConaughey. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> podcast, but he talks about making sure all the buckets are, are equal. equally full. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have to do that. Yeah, that makes sense. So what hmm. about how do you see yourself in five years? Oh man. So what year is that? Let's put a year on it. 2028, right? 2020. Yeah. seems like forever. I know. We're right? to 2020 and then we're here or 2024. And right? now we're talking about 2028. 2028. Eight, nine. Mm -hmm. Um, what would I tell myself? Oh, well, like, well, how do you see it? How do yeah. I see it in five years? Yeah. Um, I hope my town is rejuvenated. Rejuvenated, like we were talking about. That's mm -hmm. always a goal for my community. Um, I'll probably be, I'll probably be at that, that spot career-wise, where I am probably directing and acting and stuff that comes out in theaters. Uh, I mean, I'm doing back to acting. Yeah, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. doing a theatrical now, 
I mean, that's where it, I mean, I'm, I'm getting closer to the level where I can do that and put myself in those spots now, um, at a bigger level. Um, I think that'll be happening then. My main goal though, is I, I just hope spiritually I'm where I need to be with the way the world is going. That's my main goal. Mm. And I think that that's the one I have been paying the least attention to lately. Mm. Yeah. But, like if things are going to continue to go, go the way they are. Rough yeah. The I, world I, and you I hope in five years, my spirit is where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm always reminded too. I got like die tomorrow. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. If you die tomorrow, like, are you, are you at the right spot? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah. But I do hope in five years that I, I got to have it. I hope I figure something out by then. Yeah. More so than like a career and more so than building. Well, I all think, the buckets. All yeah. the buckets, yeah. Well, I think just by like what Yosuke said a bit ago about the YouTube videos, the fact that you acknowledge it is the first step into being there. Like that's your focus right now. So I think it's only Say natural. Well, the fact that like the fact you're acknowledging that you want your spirit to be where it's supposed to be. Oh, yeah. That is already something. The big step. Yeah. Right. And the fact that the you're focus. already thinking about yeah. it, struggling with it, yeah. wanting that, that means you're already, yeah, yeah that's a good point. The yeah. fact Say that where you're your focus doing, goes, energy yeah. flows. And so you're putting your energy into that and that's what's going to happen. Right. The fact that you're even yeah. thinking that is a good yeah. sign. Yeah, that's true. And there's also, it, depending on how like woo woo you want to be about it, I don't think that you're going to die in your, in your spirit, not be where it's supposed to be because everything is supposed to happen the way things are supposed to happen. Oh man. That's yeah. deep. Oh my God. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, I've been saying that a lot of times, like, you know, everything will work out, but you know, nothing is like, what do you expect it to be? You know? Right. That's it's going to be what it's supposed to be. Yeah. I yeah. Which yeah. sounds so like brushing it off. Like I have, I have a, a friend who we all know yeah. who the minute I say it is what it is or what it's supposed to be, he immediately gets frustrated and he's like, no, that's just like giving up. That's just, I'm, I'm, so. I'm forcing the train to make it go yeah. the way I want it to go. And I'm like, yeah, it's going to be what it's going to be. It's like my way of, Man. like, I can't overly focus on this at well, all. Well, it's like those t- Twilight Zone episodes back in the day where like, people would see into the future mm-hmm. and because they saw what was going to happen in the future, they acted a certain way. And because yeah. it was that route they took that ended up being why that ended up happening. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because they were trying out. to like, trying to avoid it, trying to yeah. avoid this. So they start going over here and then that was what actually triggered it, triggered that. Mm-hmm. So it's or like, like in back to the future. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. But are you going to, are you going <laughs> to, yeah. But it's like, are you Marty going McFly to like, Marty McFly did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, uh, yeah. Is there, is there some kind of like, destiny i guess where you're going to arrive regardless of what actions you take but then is there consequences for the free will of your decisions both that's, both and all both, both at the same time both yeah, and all at the gosh, same time yeah dude, that's and i think that your destiny can change based off of your path that gets into another whole other combo yeah. but like yeah, that's what i'm saying there's a lot of people that believe that's that like a six there's, hour talk that there's like yeah. many versions of you happening all at the same time like, you know, you take a little path and now you're on these multiple like dimensions. Right. Simultaneously Gosh, happening damn. all at the same time. Yeah. Like quantum <laughs> physics are like time or, is not linear. It's all or, around. Or all maybe happening. you arrive at the same spot, but how you got there was different with that your choice and one was harder than the other. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Multiple little versions. Be like in Stranger Things, there's that underworld. Shit's yeah. going down. I just read a book called Midnight Library. And then uh, that was like a kind of concept of the one girl like try to commit suicide, go to like a library, and then she has a whole bunch of book of the different kind of the life decisions she made. She was like a rock star, she was a a scientist, Mm. she was like a happy wife or happy Mm -hmm. mom, and then all sorts of stuff she lives in that, like a life, but she comes back to that, like, you know, and then like, it was kind of eye-opening to me, like, because like, end of, I guess like a spoiler alert, but like, you know, it's just like, She's not happy, and then like she, like a library crashes, and the only book, what was left was the when she committed the suicide. Oh, like means it altered. Yeah, she can't that. make it. She oh. can't make it happy, completely happiness for herself because that wasn't true life. It was all imagination. But she had to go back to the life she already had. So like it was kind of like watch a, this. yeah yeah that was like a that was a great book and then like it ma- made me thought about a bunch of too. things because mm-hmm. I went back to Japan like you know a couple weeks ago and then like I thought about it too like what if I stay there like what kind of life I have yeah. and then like you know like okay what if, what if I didn't start a business you know all mm-hmm. kind of stuff happens but 
it is what it is. It is what <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do I your did, steps. you know, and they just like, Yeah. I mean, that's similar to that movie, um, and I, I probably need to watch like four more times, wrap my head around, around it, but the everything all at once, or mm. everywhere all at once, it won all the Golden I've Globes. He- I've heard of that, yeah. And it it is. is similar to everything we're talking about, how it's, yeah. you kind of have a soul contract, and then you come to Earth, and then you can have multiple versions of yourself oh, happening is that what all at about? once. Yeah, and it's about a mother and a daughter and the Something. father, and that they're all kind of connected on a bigger so plane. Make that yeah. movie, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, you need to see it, but you have to really sit down and watch wow. it. It's yeah. There's a not to make this like a Bible study. There's a book in the Old Testament. It's called Ecclesiastes, and what it's about is it's not a preachy storybook. It's literally where a king was in his 90s and he knew he wasn't going to live much longer, and he sat down and wrote random sentences about everything he thought. Oh, and, yeah, I'm and, familiar with that, yeah. Yeah, like wisdom things, just one sentence long, no no mm-hmm. coherency of like they're all tied. It was yeah. just, he would just say things, and a lot of a lot, a of, lot of it was did, like life lessons, right? Yeah, and he would just say like, that makes no sense sometimes why. Well, he would say things like, you know, the rich man and the poor man will both eventually end up in the same spot six feet under the ground. Mm. Um, and one of them he said too is he says you know there have been kings who have lived that we have all forgotten and we don't even know they existed and if that's going to happen to them the world is definitely going to forget about you that's in the like, old testament yeah and i was like dang that's he, in the old testament yeah he's like well, the world's going to forget that. about you because and, wow. and what his point was is like he was lamenting on the fact that he, he had a phrase in that same book that said Anything my mind imagined, I could put before my eyes because he had trillions of dollars in today's money. Oh. So he could build anything he wanted. And right. then he would switch over to food. And then after he got burnt out on switching over to food, he'd switch over to lusting and he got burnt out on that. He could do anything he wanted with trillions of yeah. dollars. And um, he struggled to find his own happiness. He, yeah, that's yeah. what the whole thing was about. And the repetitive theme in it is vanity, vanity, all is vanity, it's worthless. It was really like a, a depressing. He was lamenting Chapter. after all this stuff. Yeah. But yeah, but he was just saying like fame was one too. And then one of his little... Because he was at one point probably the most powerful man in the world. Yeah. And one of his phrases were like, if, if there's been kings around that we don't even... Rem- Literally, nobody knows they ever existed. Yeah. Um, it's going to forget about you too. So just think about that when you're right. like trying to leave a legacy. <laughs> take it take it easy, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When it's like trying to leave. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It also means find your happiness. Somewhere not in, else. Not in legacy. That's yeah. what it was about. That's that's what a lot of it was about. Was like he was he tried to find happiness in all of these material things, mm-hmm. and he'd move on to something else, and he never could find it in any of those things. Right. But it's just a series of random mm. things. However, that he though, mm. he's saying all that as he has his own book in the Old Testament of the <laughs> largest sold book in the history of the of the Bible. There are only some people yeah. who are remembered forever. Yeah. yeah. And that is preached <laughs> to good, in churches yeah, that's true. That's true. all yeah, across yeah, yeah. the world. Nobody's going to be remembered, but he is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I understand what he means there. Yeah, yeah, I, is, I get and it. And it's true, yeah. But the irony is but, he yeah. is... You are famous. Uh, yes. Sol- Solomon who's wrote it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You so, are... You're, 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 your chapter's literally worshipped by millions of right, people. Right, 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 right. But that's what all it is, is, is some of them would just be a sentence long mm-hmm. or maybe just a paragraph, but they're just random wisdom things that he had learned through being king for all those years. That's all it's about. That's mm. pretty great. Yeah. So awesome. you're, it's if you're ever in like a wisdom phase of... Mm-hmm. But don't read it if you're in a depressing state, though, because it, it will yeah. add to it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good note. Maybe next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Man, what a yeah. way to what do we end that? On? Yeah, Man, this is cool. this has been great. I mean, how many hours are we in? I don't know. You missed the uh, city council stories, but I no, I'll totally right. listen to it. You know, I mean, like yeah. uh, mm-hmm. recorded. That's the beauty at, about the, this conversation. Yeah. It's all recorded. We're at three hours. Right? Yeah, this is not going to be a three-hour like long video. Is it? This is a weekend? normal. This is a normal Adam and I lunch. This is this is yeah. probably <laughs> like a three-hour podcast. Yeah, no way it can be three hours. Well, maybe Nobody's going to listen to us talk maybe, for three hours. Maybe no we way. cut it to like a segments. You know? Yeah, talk yeah. segments. Uh, we. I but, just gave you a year's worth of content. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> you are right, though. We should have like. We should have we should have been like okay let's do Halloween Bert portions yeah and then <laughs> politic portions I and mean, then movie portions yeah right <laughs> no, I'm, I'm down like I'm like I really enjoy this yeah. you know maybe we yeah. can do this like a quarterly or something you know I'm yeah. down yeah. yeah yeah like every three months I'd love to do that yeah that'd be talk fun. to you guys every three months I mean, oh my gosh whoa. I don't know if I'd want to give you the honor of doing that. <laughs> Maybe every Adam six months. I don't know. Every, every, <laughs> the honor of doing Maybe that. every six months. Let's do it. Whatever. You know? <laughs> the honor of doing it. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. But I guess I can't. You want to end it? How do I end it? <laughs>
Like I tell them to my first subscribe time. and hit the like and oh and yeah, do I do a point at a thing that's you gotta visible? do the, you gotta do the thing where like smash that like yeah. button smash <laughs> that like button. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they all say. Yeah. Did I say it right? That's what they all like say. Like and subscribe now. I don't know, I don't know why I helpful. go into this deeper radio voice. Yeah. When I <laughs> I don't know, but like I just like say like thank you for like watching and then thank you yeah. for watching. Yeah. Okay, just feed me the information and I'll look uh, at the camera. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> subscribe. Subscribe. Uh, like and comment. Like and comment. Because that will like help and comment me and help everybody to listen to spread the world to to like listen to like somebody needs to hear this message. Yeah. So for sure. I appreciate that. What he said. And if you're watching <laughs> on the uh, if you're listening on the iTunes or Spotify. Mm -hmm. Give us five star reviews. Five star reviews. And uh, if there's any seniors that are watching this on Facebook, uh, also <laughs> like. <laughs> you have a Facebook page okay, or is that too on. old? Hold on. Is hold that on. too old? <laughs> so I love that you just said that because every morning when I'm getting ready, I watch Facebook in the video. I hit the video mm -hmm. icon. I watch videos on Facebook every day. <laughs> so do I. So we're seniors. Is that what we're, you're saying? We are not. 18. <laughs> yeah. It's because they're long go running. YouTube. They go, go, to go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. I'll watch the videos on YouTube. Yeah. But wow. uh, thanks. Well, see you guys Yay. next week. Right. Bye. Peace.